In God's kingdom, the Messiah is the bridegroom. And you do not know the year or the day when he is suddenly coming to all who are prepared. So it's wise to be ready all the time. There's a book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. It says, Revelation 1 8, I am Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and, w and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. All right, Shalom, Shalom. 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 The prophets in Babylon to my left. To my left. Uh, Brother Zakorn. In front of me. Brother Daniela. I don't know, brother, your call. You know, we just gonna come with a little lesson, man. Uh, I will not meet thee as a man, you know, because the Lord is coming back. Yahweh Shah is coming back. And when he comes back, he's coming with the power of the spiritual world. All right? He's coming with the heavenly host. You know, he's coming to seek vengeance. All right? Upon these heathens and upon these Edomites. And even upon two-thirds of his own people. So with that... We're going to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahusha, Ba'ashim, Kakadash. Then we're to the apostles and others of great mills, so that's all that is truth. Peace, love, and blessings to the brothers and sisters that wholeheartedly believe. May Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahusha, continue for blessings upon you and your household. We can start off with seven again. Khan. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. What are the clouds? All right, what are the clouds? When you see clouds in the scriptures, is more than likely talking about the chariots, which are the world, which are, which the world ignorantly calls UFOs. All right, let's get this real quick. You know, let's get this real quick. All right, so lock your me. This is the book of uh. This is the book of Psalms, chapter one hundred four, and verse three. Who layeth the beings of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariots, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Alright? Yeah, man. And the chariot, once again, the clouds, you know, they they, they, they are the chariots they are referred to as clouds sometimes in the scriptures. Which are which the chariots are what the world inevitably calls UFOs and aliens. They're not aliens. They're the they're the vehicles of the heavenly hosts, which are the angels. Come on, ahead, bro. It says and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. All right, it says, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Yeah, all eyes shall see him because he's coming back with ten thousands of thousands of chariots. And not to mention this huge ship that he's going to be in, you know. So everybody's going to see him. It says, even they also which pierced him, which is talking about reincarnation. You know, reincarnation is indeed biblical. The same spirits that beat our Lord and whipped our Lord and offer our Lord up to go through the things he went through, they are back today and they are going to see him. All right, you can go to the next verse. And it's, it's to finish off, it says, even so, amen. Hi. All right, in verse eight, it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, so the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. And which is to come, go ahead. It says, and which is to come, the Almighty. The Almighty. The Almighty, man. All right. The Yahweh Shah told his disciples, all power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Everything that we see, you know, and things that we don't see belongs to Yahweh Shah. The only person that's above that Yahweh Shah is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And when the Lord comes back, you know, he's he's gonna he's gonna it's gonna be manifested that everything is under his feet. We just don't see it right now. But everything is already his, man. Everything is Yahweh Shah's. Um this you can get that Isaiah now. Come on. This is the book of Isaiah chapter forty seven, verse three. It says, Thy nakedness shall cover be uncovered. Yeah, thy sin your sins. You know, the sins of this place are gonna be uncovered, man. They they have no covering for their sins. They are naked, they're bare. You see, go ahead. It says, yeah, thy shame shall be seen. Thy shame shall be seen. Because they're going to lose horribly, man. When the Lord comes back, it, it ain't going to be a fight. You know, it's not going to be a fight. It's going to be a one-headed quitter, man. First round knockout. Go ahead. It says, 
I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. Come. <laughs> he not coming back to die again, man. The Lord ain't coming back to hold hands. He ain't coming back to, to, to talk. The Lord is coming back to conquer. Come to render the kingdom, uh, like to render the kingdom. Come. To take back. Take back the saints, uh, Daniel's. The saints shall take the kingdom. That's right. And it begins with Yahweh shall. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 4. It says, For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. You see? So the Lord says the day of vengeance is in his heart, man. The Lord is looking forward to this day that he's going to come back with vengeance. Vengeance for his people and also vengeance for himself. All right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 16. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. You see? The slain of the Lord shall be many. You know? The Lord is going to destroy a lot of people by way of those ICBMs. And he's also going to destroy a lot of people by the laser beams coming from those chariots. You see? And this day, is, is it burns. It burns within the Lord's heart. He's waiting for this day. Even as we speak right now, Yahweh Shah is on the edge of this throne, waiting for the Father to give him the A-OK -okay to come down here, man. Come. Because once the Heavenly Father gives Yahweh Shah the OK to come, he's not wasting no time. Yahweh Shah ain't going to say, okay, let me go to the bathroom real quick. Let me get dressed. No, the Lord is on the edge of his seat, waiting. Because... To us, it seemed like forever, but to the Lord, it only seemed, it only, it's only been two days. Oh. It's only been two days since Yahweh Shah went to the spirit world, man. To him, that's nothing. To us, it's like forever, you feel me? But to Yahweh Shah, it's like, it's nothing, man. That's why he said, behold, I come quickly. You see? Mm -hmm. uh, what to you got? The, to the Lord, that, to the Lord, like, like the brothers just said, to him, he just came to the spirit world two days ago. But to us, it was thousands of years. You're right. right. That's why... Like, no matter what, you can't take it away from him. Like, the Lord is still going to be upset. Y'all just sent him to the spirit world. To him, it was two days ago, so that anger is still running. They had a, that, anger, that anger is still kindled. You know, like, oh, like, that, was, that was thousands of years ago. Nah, it was, that, that, was, that, was, that, was like, that was like yesterday. You know what I'm saying? He ain't forget. He still got those same marks. He got a new body. He's immortal, but he still has those same pierces, man. You see? You have something, bro? Come. Come. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 2. Verse 1, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? All right. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh Shemoshai and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. All right. So verse 2 this, uh, um, is explaining like the, the counsel against the Lord, which is Psalms, uh, like Psalms 83rd chapter. All right. You know, they... Come against the children of Israel. All the nations are against the children of Israel, uh, according to Deuteronomy, uh, 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 like the blessings and the curses of Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight. All right. So it said. So it says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? You know what I'm saying? Especially you know, and that example is Babylon the Great, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. You know his prideful um, characteristic. You know the, his prideful character. You know what I'm saying? They um, like they imagine a vain thing because they think that they're going to flourish forever. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like you know, and, and uh, and it says the kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together. So all the nations take counsel together against against Yahweh and against the, and against his anointed, saying, "Let us break their bands asunder, and cast away their cords from um, from us." And over verse four, and this is Yahweh Shai. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Um, Yahweh Shai shall have them in derision. All right. So the Lord's gonna laugh at them, man. You know what I'm saying? Like the way of their um, military. You know what I'm saying? The carnal military, the space force. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna be sitting in the chariots, and all the angels are gonna be laughing at them, man. You know what I'm saying? Come. You know. So, and uh, you know, and, um, and that word derision goes into, you know, ridicule. You know what I'm saying? Mockery. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like pretty much the Lord's going to make fun of them because they're nothing compared to the chariots, man. They're nothing compared to the heavenly military, man. They're, you trying, know? they're trying to find a, find a spiritual war with uh, car carnal weapons. Exactly. 
Verse 6, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the, the decree. Yahweh have said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Okay, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance, and the utmost and the ut um and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possessions. Alright, the saints shall take the kingdom through Yahweh Shai. Alright. So pretty much, you know, like the Lord's gonna set up the decree for the Lord to take over here. Um like the Lord's gonna take over earth. He's gonna take over, he's gonna take back his kingdom, he's gonna render the kingdom, all right, in righteousness, man. So therefore, it's gonna be a lot of it's gonna be a very rough transition, but at the same time, but you know what I'm saying? Your house is gonna make it look very easy by the way of the chariots, by the way of the angels, by the way the um, you know, the 144,000 receiving spiritual powers and their new bodies, you know what I'm saying. It's going to be a rough transition, but it's going to also going to be an easy one as well for you, Hawashai, and for the elect, man, you know? Fine. So, verse 9, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, and thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. All right? So, it's going to be light work, man, like through Yahweh Hashim Hashai, man. Okay? Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve Yahweh Hashim Hashai with fear. Rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. So pretty much, you know, when it says kiss the son, it means to respect him, to respect him, to to honor the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Or 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 he's gonna be angry and take you out. You know what I'm saying? So it's either it's either you're going to serve him or you're going to be destroyed. All right, kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. You see. When his wrath is kindled but a little, um, sorry, when his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. All right, and who's going to trust in him? The the hundred forty four, um, like the hundred forty four thousand, which is the elect, and the one third of the children of Israel will trust in the Lord. All right, you know, because it's going to be so much going on. It's going to be so much evil upon this earth. A lot of people are going to lose their faith. But the Lord set up a people and a remnant to gonna uh, to hold that faith until the end, to endure to the end. All right, and they're gonna trust in the Lord forever, according to Isaiah chapter twenty six three and four. Okay. All right, that's it on that. Yeah, this is the book of Daniel chapter seven verse eighteen. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and even forever and ever. So, like the brother had brought out, you know, it's gonna be a rough transition, but the Lord gonna make it look easy. It's this, it's, it's nothing, man. It's nothing. When the Lord come back, it's it's, it's it's gonna be like nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it's gonna be slight work for the Lord. Here you have it. All these years they spent building up their technology. All these years they spent, you know, <laughs> building up these skyscrapers and these, you know, these high tower buildings. The Lord gonna make it all fall down in one hour. One hour, man. Con, you get that, Matthew. Yeah, get Con. This is the book of Matthew, chapter twenty-four, verse twenty-seven. It says, "For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and sendeth and sendeth even unto the west, so shall be so, so like it. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be." Yeah, for the Lord coming from the east. You see, he's coming from the east. He's gonna meet y'all over there fighting. And y'all gonna stop what y'all doing and try to fight our Lord. He's gonna make easy work of y'all. Then he's gonna come over here to the Americas, man. Alright? And, and he's gonna make slight work of he's gonna make slight work of this place. And as he coming over here, those ICBMs gonna be getting shot over here too. You see? And he's gonna deliver his elect. Yeah, you know, that's the that's the day of the Lord. The, the day of the Lord. It's gonna be a lot going on, man. But hey, it's, it's, it's gonna be a beautiful day for the elect. And it's going to be a scary day for two-thirds of our people and the heathens. Because the Lord is not coming back to, to, to hug people and shake hands, man. The Lord coming back to, to, to conquer. Lord. Yes, man. Let's take over this place. Let me get this real quick. Con, con, I got another precept, too. What you got, bro? Um, it's, uh, it's in Luke. 
I'm gonna grab this real quick while you're getting that. Okay. This is the book of Jude, chapter 1 and verse 14. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, the angels. And it's not going to be ten thousands, thousands of thousands of angels that's coming back. Jude 1 and 15, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of the, all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. And of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. You see? So the Lord, man, he, 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 he coming back to snap. It just said he coming back with 10,000 of the saints to execute judgment upon all the ungodly. And how is he going to do that? You know? He's coming back to do it with those ICBMs and those laser beams from those ships. That's right. You can grab what you was about. Uh, one second. Uh... And this is for everybody that always thinks, like, dude, when the Lord comes back, you know what I'm saying? He's coming back with peace, love, and prayer, you know, that that will be there us like a push. And it shows you in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse chapter ten, verse 34, it says, Think not that I, I am come to send peace on earth. Yeah, Lord, I came not to send peace, but a sword. Yeah, he ain't coming back to uh bring peace to you fucking heathens, man. You know, he's coming back to bring peace to us, you know. And, and the Lord is a man of war. So the Lord is coming back, you know, to, 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 to put a war to the Lord is coming back to uh end the war of all wars, man. This is the last war. You see, after this, the nation shall learn no war no more. You know, this is it. So he's coming to send a sword, man. Once again. Read on. Read on. Con. Con. What it says? It says. Nah, we just need it, uh, 30, 34. Yeah, 34. Yeah, con. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and I got a piece of like unto it. Con. Con, that, that, that was it. Con. I got a piece of like unto that. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 51. Suppose ye that I, suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you, nay, but rather division. All right? So he's not come to send peace on earth, according to Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34. Uh, he's not come to send peace, but a sword, and and uh and Luke twelve and fifty one, you know, he's not going to come to send peace on earth. He's going to uh, divide everyone, but rather division. All right, mm. verse fifty two, for from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. All right. You know, and it goes on, and, um, and it goes on to like the father turning against the um, son, and and the daughter turning against the mother, man. So the Lord, He's gonna divide. It's gonna be so scary out here. You know what I'm saying? Family gonna turn against each other, friends versus friends. It's gonna be a very evil time, according to Ezekiel, chapter seven. Let's grab that real quick, because the Lord is coming back as a God. And not as, you know, the flesh and blood that he was here on earth. He's going to become a God, man. And we're going to see a God into. Uh, and yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, bro. You good. Come on. You showing me something. Yeah, I was 26. I think he's down with his. Come on, man. So we're going to witness a, a, a God in person. You know what I'm saying? In person, we're going to witness a God, man. And, and, and a whole world will will fall before the Lord's feet, man. It's going to be that scary. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. You know what I'm saying? So this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 7, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, and evil and only evil, behold, is come. And end is come, the end is come. It watches for thee, behold, it is come. All right? So we are in the latter end. But soon that end end is literally around the corner. And we're going to witness the Lord's return within our lifetime. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to be a very scary day. Especially, you know, us being in these bodies, we're still going to tremble. We're still going to, like, be at awe. You know what I'm saying? We're still going to see these things, man. We're still going to be in shock. But those who got the, on the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which is, which is the elect, man, you know, and the one-third, man, they won't be as scared as much as people of the world, man. So therefore, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a new, it's going to be a new thing unto us, 
because because it's a time like never before, according to uh, Jacob's trouble. Uh, um, Jeremiah thirty-seven. Yeah, Jeremiah thirty-seven, man. Daniel twelve and one. There you go. There, yeah, Daniel twelve and one, man. Mm. You know. Yeah, this, this, this is some scary times we living in, man. You know, but it's also comforting because we almost have fought this bitch, and this ain't forever. You can go ahead, bro. Start right. at verse twenty-six. This the book 22? of. Yeah. Yeah. Start at verse twenty-six. It's the book of Luke, chap Luke chapter 21, verse 26. It says, men's, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. It said, verse 27, it says, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great, great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw up nigh. Yeah, man. So the Lord is coming back with power and great glory. That's right. Power. Pure power. You know? Pure power, man. Power the earth has never seen before. It's not going to be like the UF, the, 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 UF, the, the so called UFO videos you see on YouTube and they just appear and they disappear and they fly away. You're going to see them up close and personal. And you're going to see people getting zapped. You're going to see people getting beat into power, man. Come. And if uh, if you want a visual, a similar visual, but not, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to have a picture in your head, watch Independence Day or or the, like, the last Avengers movie. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the end game. You know what I'm saying? Where, where, um, what's his name, man? Thanos. Thanos. Thanos came with the chariots, man. Thanos came with, a, a, like, a, he came with a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of um, spaceships, like to destroy the Avengers, man. You know what I'm saying? And and he um and he went all out. You know what I'm saying? So like that's a perfect visual if you see it in the spirit, and also Independence Day as well. Yep. You know? Don't you have? Uh, you have something? Oh no. You said you have something? You know, I, um, well, let me get diet garments of Bosra. Um, real quick. Come on, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 1. Who is this cometh from Edom with dyed garments of Basra? All right. And if you go to, um, you know, like Basra, Basra is the capital city of Edom. Okay. And, um, and, and Basra is also known as spiritually of uh, Babylon the Great, uh, which is Babylon the Great. All right. So it's literally talking about Babylon the Great and also United States of America. You know what I'm saying? You know, so so Basra is a it's a capital city of Edom, but also it's out it's also talking about you know America. Okay, this that is glorious in this this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in the in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the in, in the wine fat? All right. So you know what they do is um like in the vineyard, like they pick the um you know like the harvest from the vineyard, like the grapes, you know, and they put it in the basket and they bring it to the um the wine fat where people got to step on it to make good wine, and uh, and, and and later on to age the wine to make the um like. Like to make the wine, uh, you know, taste good. You know what I'm saying? So they're comparing that to the Lord when he comes back. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a lot of blood, man. It's going to be a lot of blood. And it's going to be a lot of destruction. Um, Like here on earth. But especially here in America. Before America is taken by nukes. He's going to cause a lot of destruction. And, and before he comes, like... It, and also before he comes, the world's already like America's already is already going to be kindled with fire, with all the destruction, man. Yeah. But, all right. Verse three, I have trodden the winepress alone. So the Lord, He's going to do all the light work, man. He's going to do everything. You know what I'm saying? The angels going to have their part, but Yahweh, He's going to do everything, bro. You know what I'm saying? He's going to do everything. He's going to cause all the destruction. He's going to cause all the plagues. Everything. He said, I have charmed the wine press alone. 
and of the people there was none with me. You see, for I would tread them in my anger. Then that's going to be God tier anger. All right. It's going to be beyond beyond this world. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's going to be anger like like it's going to be anger that's that's out of this world and trample them in my fury and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my raiment for the day of vengeance is my is in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come all right so the lord ain't playing man and 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 we and we all feel that you know us brothers that's doing this class and also brothers within this truth we know the Lord ain't, ain't playing, man. When he come back, it's going to be scary. God. It's going to be absolutely scary. And, and and all we ask for the Lord is to have mercy on us. You know what I'm saying? Feel the Lord now. So you want to feel the Lord later and be condemned with the world, man. You know? Like catch the hell now. Feel the Lord now so the Lord can deal with you and chastise you. You know what I'm saying? And also endure his chastisements. You know what I'm saying? And ask the Lord to give you a strong spirit to endure his chastisement so you won't be condemned with the world, man. Okay? Because he's coming back with vengeance and he's going to be absolutely angry. That's why he got red eyes, man. Because he's angry. And also, when you drink a lot of wine, you know what I'm saying, your eyes turn red as well. But he's coming back with pure, pure vengeance. Spiritual world. Spiritual world anger. It's an anger out of this world. Spiritual anger. world anger. Con, anger that beautiful. you can't. Anger can, that you can't even comprehend. Con. Like, imagine as ang as angry as have you seen somebody on this earth? Imagine that times a billion. Like you, nothing you can even imagine. Nothing you've ever you saw before. Nothing. Nothing that you can fathom. That that the, the anger and the destruction that's coming is gonna be like we said, like something you've never seen before. So it's gonna be a time that there, a time that like it never was before. Come man, in Jeremiah thirty and six, talks about how men's, uh, like how men's gonna have hands on their loins, screaming like women. Yeah. You know how much more the women, when when men are screaming screaming like women, hands on their loins. Men who bench three hundred pounds at the gym, you know what I'm saying? You know like like your Terry Cruises and uh, you know. Arnold Yeah, your Arnold Schwarzenegger's yeah, man. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. And they're going to be crying. How much more the women? How much more the children after the women? People are going to be dying just off the side of it. Come. I got a precept. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Which white goes into pure, and horse goes into power. That's right. You know? It says, and he that sat upon him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, hmm. and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So the Lord's coming back to conquer, you know. He's coming back to conquer the earth. Once again, going back to Daniels, the saints shall take the kingdom. And they shall possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump from there to Revelation 19. This is the book of Revelation 19, and verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. Why, why, why does he have many crowns upon his head? Because he's coming to take these, these Edomites. And also these other heathens that's ruling with these Edomites out of power. That's right. That's why he had many crowns upon his head. Okay. And it says, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And that name is Yahweh Shah. That's we right. know that name. All right. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in the blood. Going back to dyed garments from Basra. You see? The Lord tread the wine press alone. Which is symbolizing how many people the Lord is going to slay. And his name is called the word of Yahweh. And the armies which were in heaven follow him upon white horses, pure power, clothed in fine linen, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So yeah, man, the, the, the armies which are in heaven follow him. So Yahweh Shah is going to be leading the charge. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen horses run with each other? You have one horse ahead of the other horses. So Yahweh Shah, he's going to be leading the charge, man. When the when when he comes back, it says uh. And out of his mouth go with a, a sharp sword. You know, what's that that sharp sword? Is those laser beams coming from the, 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 the chamber of those chariots, man. It says that with it, should he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness 
and wrath of the almighty power. Yeah. And he had on his vestures and on his thigh, his, on his thigh, a name written King of King and Lord of Lords. Come on. Yep. Yes. So yeah, man. Yahweh shot coming back with power. And it's also just like Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, if you go into Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17, because you know how Yahweh Shai is the King of King and the Lord of Lords. Let me grab it. Yes. He's, he's, he's just like the Heavenly Father, because look, this is what the Heavenly Father is called. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17. For, for Yahweh, your power is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great power, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, meaning no respect of persons, nor take a reward. No, so like, you know, you know, the Lord, you know, you know, the Lord, he don't care about money or anything because that's all his. You know what I'm saying? So, Yahweh is the king of kings. Yahweh is the God of gods. All right? You know? And to back that brother up, I got a precept too. And it's the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 28. It says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard Come. that the everlasting power, the, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. Con. The, the Lord is, like, like, like I said, there is no searching of his understanding. The Lord is so powerful. Like, it's, like I said earlier, you can't even fathom the amount of power that he's, the Lord is coming with. The amount of anger and power that he's coming with. You can't even imagine. This is like, like the brother said, it's a, it's a spirit, a spiritual, spirit, a spiritual power. That's you right. You call it. Yeah. The scriptures say the earth shall will to and fro like a drunkard. By those ICBMs, man, it's, it's, it's overkill. He just. He going to come back with so much power, man. It's ridiculous. You know, nobody will ever forget this. Imagine how much anger you have to have to come back and overkill the earth with 200 million ICBM missiles. I can get that real quick. Con, oh, yeah. Are Con, you done on that? Con, that was it. All right. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse 15. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. For to slay the third part of men. What that is again? Revelation chapter 9 verse 15. Come. And it says, And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. Alright, so, you know, the hour and the day and a month and a year is, is, is drawing nigh. So, it, so it's an appointed time. And it says, For to slay the third part of men. And who are the third part of men? That, that is Esau, the so-called white man. All right, the third part of men is the heathens. Okay, verse sixteen, and the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand. So that's two hundred thousand times a thousand, which is two hundred million nuclear missiles. So the horsemen are are, are the nuclear missiles. You know, you know what I'm saying? Which is the which is the dark parable within the revelations. You know what I'm saying? It's a dark parable. Um, John the Revelator is comparing uh, uh, the IC, um, the missiles to horsemen, and also the the the, intercon uh, the intercontinental ballistic missile is one of the Lord's armies. All right, that's one of the Lord's armies besides the angels and the chariots. You know, so and I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and then that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and uh, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. So he's comparing the missiles to certain animals, like the lion, you know, you know, you know like the lion in the, um, like the lion with his mane, you know what I'm saying? It looks like fire, pretty much, when it runs, you know what I'm saying? And also, you know, horses with their tails, you know what I'm saying? You know, wiggling back and forth, you know what I'm saying? He's comparing similar animals to the missiles, man. So therefore, the Lord's army, you know, one of the Lord's army uh, uh, is, is, the, is the nuclear missiles, you know? So it's going to be a very terrible day here on earth, man. Ron, when the Lord comes back, he's, he's coming back and he's bringing damn near all of his wrath with him. All right? You got nuclear missiles. You got the angels. You got the chariots. You got the Lord himself. Come on. All right? 
You got Leviathan, right? You you have you have everything. The Lord is coming back to overkill this place. He's coming to destroy all these heathens and take his people out of this captivity that we've been in. All right. And like he said, he's not coming to meet you as a man. That's you right. Can't, you can't sit there and think you're gonna try to step to the Lord in that day. He's not coming to meet you as a man. Come. Yeah, ain't bang up. Come Romans. Come. This is the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believed. All right? So those who are listening to this video or coming, or coming across to this video, now it's a high time to awake out of sleep. And those who woke out of that sleep, you know, grow in the grace thereof, you know? For now is our salvation nearer than we believed. You know what I'm saying? We're closer to the kingdom than we think we are because we're in this carnal flesh, man. Carnal. You know? So we're closer to the kingdom. We're closer to Jacob's trouble, the plagues. And I was there. How much more now? Come You know what I'm saying? I, you, know, you know, us brothers went by the store and that's a hyperinflation in, uh, on, on meat, like chicken and steak and all that stuff. Like, you know? I saw I saw a, a, a like a like a steak. It's literally twelve dollars a pound now. You know what I'm saying? It's twelve dollars a pound. So what? The steak was like what, like five pounds? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's like twelve dollars a pound. Chicken's becoming more expensive. You know what I'm saying? They just up their prices with the sandwiches. So how much more? What six months from now, man? You know, a lot of people won't be able to afford certain foods and. You know what I'm saying? The government might end up, what? We're cutting off the government assistance. People go, people are going to go insane, man. It's going to get crazy. It's, 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 it, it just slowly, it's just slowly going up. And uh, some people are noticing it. Uh, some people are noticing it. Some people aren't. But sooner or later, everyone's going to notice. And when you walk into that store, it's going to be a, what? It's going to be a $20, it's going to be a $20 gallon of milk. Come on. It's gonna be a twenty dollar gallon, a gallon of milk, and people want to start, start robbing, uh, robbing stores, and on. you know what I'm saying? It might get so bad out here. You walk in the store, nobody's gonna want to pay twenty dollars for a gallon of milk. No. So my people, people just gonna be walking in stores and walking right out with whatever they want. They're gonna be stealing. Come on. From that point on, everything's gonna go downhill. Unless That's right. Those prices drop. Everybody gonna, everybody gonna keep stealing. Yeah, prices they're dropping. They, they, their plan is to collapse the dollar. Come on. That's right. And our, that, that's our plan. Uh, we want them to collapse the dollar, so we we on board with everything the elites got running. Though. Everything the elites wants to accomplish, we fully on deck with it, man. That's right. It just brings the kids, the king, king Con. that much faster. Con. and all we need, and all we need to know that we're a step closer to the kingdom, and almost at the finish line, is is for them to release the mob. Con. We need for them to release the chip. Once they release the chip, that's when we know we're really, really, really close to the kingdom. Con. All right. That's, that's when we, it. That's the last. That's really the, the last major prophecy before the Lord comes back. Con. Before stuff gets the popping off, like. And we want that to happen. Con. We want them to release the chip, because we know that your house is literally, literally, literally around the corner. We need that to happen. Con. We need your house, bro. So. Uh, you um. Con. That'll be a faith booster to all the brothers in the truth. Con. To make to have made it that far and seen everything that's happened. It's going to increase your faith. You're going to know that the Lord is dealing with you through them times. You can see how everybody else is going to be bugging out and how everybody's going to be acting. But you're sane. You got your mind. You know what I'm saying? The world can be going to hell. You still, you still have a smile on your face. You know what I'm saying? You, you're at peace because you know the Lord is still, still dealing with me. All right? And the times that we're coming into, you're going you're gonna to wish and pray and hope that you have that. That's why, like the brother said earlier, now is a hard time to wake out of your sleep. All right? Coming back to the Lord and doing what we have to do. It's men... And women, the women in this truth that's following under their men, that's following under Khan. Khan, Khan, for sure, man. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Are your brothers got any more precepts? No, that was it. That was it. All right. So I hope this class was edifying to the elect. Call her law. Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bashim, and this was edifying to you. It's edifying to the elect. Till next time, we say Shalom. Shalom.